Again. Clemency recommended for death row inmate Julius Jones. Jones making his own plea before the pardon and parole board today. And the family of his victim, Paul Howe, expressing their concern that Jones remains a threat to society. News 4's Jessica Bruno is live now with where the case goes from here. Jess. Yeah, Kevin and Jolene, for years we've heard it from Jones supporters, his family, his attorneys, but today Julius Jones for himself told the pardon and parole board he did not kill Paul Howell, which you'll recall has been refuted time and time again by DA David Prater, the AG's office, and the Howell family. Now, whether he gets executed or gets clemency, that is now up to Governor Stitt. I am not the person responsible for taking Mr. Howell's life. For the first time in 20 years, we're hearing from death row inmate Julius Jones, who was convicted of killing Paul Howell in an Edmond driveway in 1999. I was not present during this robbery, and I did not know that anyone had been killed until the day after Mr. Howell was murdered. Jones, talking to the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board on Monday, making a final plea for his life, asking for clemency. I first met Chris Jordan during my junior year at John Marshall when he enrolled and started playing basketball with us. Chris was rough around the edges. Christopher Jordan was Jones' alleged accomplice. Jones and his attorneys believe Jordan is the shooter and that he planted the gun and red bandana that the shooter was wearing in Jones' closet where it was found by police. It was stupid of me and naive of me not to go to police with what I knew, but I was scared. Questions about Jones' alibi that night finally answered in his own words. Jones says he was home until after the murder. Chris picked me up between 11 and 11.30 that night. He looked off and told me that he'd gotten to it with some guys and shot them. The AG's office and members of the Howell family, though, still insisting Jones is the killer, pointing to DNA evidence found on the bandana. And they brought up an old transcript where Jones' attorney at the time claimed Jones told him he was not home with his parents on the night of the murder. And Megan Toby, Howell's sister who witnessed the shooting, once again talking about the length of hair under a cap worn by the shooter, saying she did not notice cornrows like the ones Jordan had at the time. There is no way cornrows could have been under the tight-fitting black stocking cap that the murderer was wearing. Ultimately, the pardon and parole board voting three to one to recommend clemency with a suggestion of life with the possibility of parole. We feel confident that Governor Stitt sees past the Jones propaganda understands protecting the public and sees who Julius Jones really is. Because the final decision is now in Governor Stitt's hands, will he commute Jones' sentence to time served, take the recommendation from the board, or deny clemency altogether, meaning Jones would be executed on November 18th? Both the Jones and Howell families now playing the waiting game. We're still on this, this nightmare, this roller coaster of emotions. It's, it's still hell. It's a nightmare that we have not woken up from yet. Now, Governor Stitt's office released a statement today saying Governor Stitt is aware of the pardon and parole board's vote today. Our office will not offer further comment until the governor has made a final decision. And once again, guys, he can do whatever he wants here, so we'll be following it closely.